All right, thanks for watching uh, this updated Chaos to Clarity. I'm meteorologist Bernie Reno. You can follow me on X, formerly known as Twitter. I'm at AccuRaino. All right, I want to give you an idea of what's going to be happening here as we get into next week. I'm starting to get more and more confident that we are going to be looking at a hurricane moving into the Gulf of Mexico, middle part of next week, and then a landfall uh, somewhere from Louisiana toward Florida as we head toward the end of the week. That could be Friday could be Saturday, Sunday. There's a little bit of timing issues here, but uh, here's a little bit of um, uh, of what we're looking at here as we move forward here. So again, we're looking at uh, thunderstorms starting to expand here in the uh, Southwest Caribbean. I'll show you that here in a second. This area ends up forming an area of low pressure that will then move into the Northwest Caribbean early to middle part of next week. And that's when development begins. And then we're looking at a tropical depression or a tropical storm moving into the Gulf of Mexico late next week and intensification possible likely into a hurricane all depends on the trough coming into the central part of the United States. I'll, I'll show you that here uh, in a second, that, that system here. All right, let me uh, show you what we're looking at here as far as the showers and thunders are uh, th thunderstorms are concerned. Now, yesterday, there wasn't any clouds in this area, but you can see just a growing area here of thunderstorms. This is the gyre that formed. Why? Well, you have a dip in the jet stream coming in across the Northwest Caribbean. What does that do? It changes the wind flow in Mexico and Central America in out of the west northwest instead of the east southeast. However, in the low levels, you still have east southeasterly winds across the eastern Caribbean, and you get the sense. See, you get this counterclockwise flow, you get an area of low pressure, and then this gyre or area of thunderstorms starts to form. Look for this to continue to strengthen and get bigger as we head toward the weekend. Then in time, that area of low pressure, what we'll, we'll do is it will be moving northward and it's into the Northwest Caribbean as we head into early next week. That's why we upgraded this area to a high development area. Uh, I believe Tuesday morning before noon, and we still think that that's going to be the case. The development, this is where we're looking at a tropical depression or a tropical storm forming in this area. It's going to be next week, probably not until Tuesday or Wednesday. This is the area that we're worried about. All right. Anybody that follows me on Twitter no, on X now knows that I'm a big history buff when it comes to hurricanes. And what I like to do is I like to look at the history of storms, where they go, what they do, and then I leverage that with meteorology. So with that being said, I want to show you this graphic. I did this earlier. And what you're looking at here is, let me put this on full so you can see it. So what I decided to do was this. All right, this is where we think there's development within 100 nautical miles of this area, right? During the month of September, storms that either formed here or moved in this area, where did they go? I tracked 42 storms during the month of September in this area. 42, where that came in this area for development, where did they go? The first thing that you notice is that typically these systems that get into Northwest Caribbean do not go into the Southeast Atlantic, very few. So this tells us right off the bat that this is going to be a Gulf storm. It is moving into the Gulf of Mexico very unlikely to not only move into Mexico or the Yucatan Peninsula and not move into the Gulf of Mexico and move into the Southwest Atlantic. That's what this graphic tells us history. The next thing I did was, is, all right, where did these storms make landfall? And I, I cut it up into a couple of areas here. And then I simply counted the number of storms and what it looked like here. So this is what I came up with. And I, I love this graphic. So this is the approximation next week during the month of September. What are the probability, just history standpoint? Now, these numbers over here seem high to me that, that this storm moved in the central of Mexico or, or Texas. But keep in mind, this is the entire month of September. When you look at when these storms moved in this area, 14% chance in Texas, 21% chance in Mexico and Central America, this was in the early part of the month not the latter half of the month. Climatology tells us there's typically too much northwesterly flow for a storm in the, in the Caribbean to move toward the Texas coast during the latter half of September. It's very rare. It's not, un, it's not impossible, but it's rare. But history also tells us that this is the main area. 
Central Gulf of Mexico, and also the Florida Peninsula. Obviously, the Central Gulf is favored history-wise over the Florida Peninsula, and that would be anywhere to the uh, east of Apalachicola. That's where I set, uh, separated. So right off the bat, that tells us that the Florida Peninsula and the Central Gulf Coast states are favored when it comes to history. All right. But it's not just history, it's also meteorology. The other thing that I noticed when I looked at these things, history also tells us that in, not only do these systems tend to go into these areas, Louisiana and Florida, so that's as a higher risk of landfall or impacts, typically these storms strengthen. Okay. What does meteorology tell us? That's what history tells us. History is just telling us that this is likely to intensify and the area from Louisiana to Florida has a higher risk of landfall and impacts than, than Texas would be. Now, what does the meteorology tell us? Well, I'll show you this in a second. The exact location or impact of this storm will depend upon, uh, across our trough that's coming into the Midwest, all right? But as far as strengthening is concerned, this is what I'm looking at. Very warm water, abundant moisture. The only thing that's going to stop this from becoming a hurricane is the wind shear. Is it lower or moderate wind shear? That's the only thing right now where I'm not 100% sure on is the wind shear on this storm. All right. With that being said, what I want to do is I want to show you some of the modeling here and let's try to figure this out. All right, what we're going to do is, and I'm going to put this on full so you can see it. I want to look at the European and the American model, the American and the European model. So let's go forward here. As we go forward, this is what's going on uh, at Thursday, Thursday next week. Here's the key. There's this trough in the Midwest. On the European, this trough is way up here across the upper Midwest, uh, eastern lakes, and into New England. Earlier today, this trough was shown to be way down here. And if this trough is that deep, what ends up happening is you have too much wind shear, and this system would not become a hurricane at all. If this trough is this far deep, number one, I think this system would get pulled toward Florida quicker with a landfall later in the week, and it would be very weak because this trough would produce too much wind shear. However, the European model has backed off on that. This 582 lightning was shown all the way down into Florida earlier today. Now notice where it is, way up in here, way up in here. And you've got a high pressure system here and you have our upper low across Texas. This would guide our tropical system more toward the central Gulf Coast states. That's the American model. That's the European model. Let's take a look at the European model. Again, this is for Thursday, a lot different. See, it takes this trough in the northeast and lifts it. See, it just lifts it out of there. You notice that? And by the time you get into Thursday, watch what happens to that trough. It's gone, and instead what do you have is you have an upper low that's cut off here. Now, with this upper low here, you have very low wind shear very low wind shear in the Gulf of Mexico. And as I mentioned, that's the only thing stopping this. If this solution would be right, different than the European, but even the European is less wind shear, this is a worst case scenario because you would be looking at an in intensifying major hurricane that would at least be category three, if not higher, heading toward the central Gulf Coast states later in the week. The European solution with this trough, not as beefy, but it does show less wind shear in this area, and that would tell me it would strengthen. Now, let me show you what the wind shear looks like on both models, and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll end it there so you get, get a sense of it. So let me show you what this wind shear looks like really quick. We'll take a look at it on Wednesday and Thursday. So this is the 200 millibar winds, and this is Wednesday. This is the American model, Wednesday into Thursday. At this point, the system is moving into the Gulf of Mexico from the Caribbean. We're looking at the winds at 200 millibars, and what I see is very low wind shear in this area. See this very low. Your wind shear is way up here where you see the coloring. That's near the Gulf Coast. And watch what happens as we go forward. This is the American model. And again, as we get in the 
Thursday afternoon, Friday morning. Notice what happens to all of this green where you have the wind shear. You see it here? Watch what happens as this system starts to approach into the Gulf of Mexico and starts approaching this area or Florida as we get into Thursday and Friday. Watch this green area lift to the north. I'm going to put this into motion and you can watch it. See how it lifts? See? And by Friday morning, there is no wind shear. See how it lifts? There we go. That means less wind shear. That means that this system would rapidly intensify and this would likely be a major hurricane threatening central Gulf Coast states. I wouldn't roll out the Florida Peninsula, but this area really would be endangered from a very powerful hurricane. Now, what does the European model have as far as this wind shear is concerned? Still looks pretty good to me, unfortunately, or pretty bad, however you want to do it. Even the European here, with this system coming into, the, into this region of the Gulf, shows very low wind shear. And then as it goes forward here, you'll see, I, I don't see as much wind shear even on Friday. You see that? It's way up in here. Not as not, it doesn't lift the wind shear as much as the GFS does the American model, but it still shows me that you've got room for a developing hurricane here. So that's what I'm looking at now. Now we're a long way away. This system hasn't even formed yet. So I want to leave you with this graphic to give uh, uh, to sh leave you with this graphic here as we move forward about what this is going to look like. All right. So let me go full on this and let me get rid of that. Okay. So next week, this is the key, this trough. How deep is it and where is it located? If this trough is a stronger trough, and let's say it comes down into here, you're going to get more wind shear and this is going to be a much weaker storm. Wouldn't even, wouldn't even be a hurricane. And it would be moving toward the Florida Peninsula at some point Thursday into Friday. However, if this trough is a lot farther to the north, as the modeling is suggesting now, that means it is weaker. That means this system is going to be a little slower as it pulls into the Gulf of Mexico, right? And it's going to be a stronger storm, and that would likely be a hurricane. And in which case, then, you're going to have some problems here of a major hurricane threatening the Florida Peninsula and especially the Central Gulf Coast states. We're not ready to rule out Florida yet I mean uh, Texas yet but I uh, but but I really do believe that the area is from Florida to uh, to Louisiana and right now if you had to tell me what's the most likely area I would say it would be from north uh, from New Orleans toward the Big Bend of Florida that that would be the area that I'd be most concerned about at the current at, at least at the current time all right that's what I'd be most worried about for a uh, landfalling storm here. So again, it all depends on this dip in the jet stream. What is it going to look like as we get into next week? You know, listen, we're the only ones that have a high risk for development. I think we're right about that. I think this is going to at least develop into a tropical depression or a storm. Where it goes depends on this trough. If you ask me right now, I'm really worried about this zone right in here from from uh, New Orleans, I would still have New Orleans in it, and toward the uh, Big Bend right in here, that this is the area to me that I'm most worried about. And because of this trough now lifting to the north, I'd really be worried about that we have a strengthening hurricane in the Gulf of Mexico late next week heading into these areas. Now, this pattern can change. And it's very important not to be too specific when we don't have the storm. So my, my key message is this, from Louisiana to the west coast of Florida, this is the area where, where I think you've really got to pay attention to this. Now, we're not ruling out Texas yet, but I think it's more likely that landfall would occur in this area. Again, we're still well away from this, at least a week, if not nine or 10 days. That's the area I'm worried about. And if this trough is forecasted or ends up being where it's forecasted to the north, then I think you have lowering wind shear here. And make no mistake about it, the only thing that will stop this system from becoming a hurricane and or a major hurricane that's category three or greater, maximum stain winds of 111 miles per hour is this shear. If we don't have any shear, we're going to have a huge problem, huge problem late next week 
along the Gulf Coast. We favor the uh, the central and eastern Gulf of Mexico over the western Gulf of Mexico. And while, again, you've got to worry about this whole area, Louisiana, toward Florida, you know, m- m- I'm, I'm starting to get more worried about this zone in here with a, perhaps a major hurricane in the Friday. So we're well away. We're well away from this, but we're giving the heads up because this storm may not form into a tropical storm or hurricane to, let's say, Wednesday or Thursday, and we could be looking at a landfall Friday. Friday night into Saturday. It's not like a tropical wave coming off Africa that we have a week to look at this, a week to warn people. When this forms, it may rapidly intensify and make landfall within 72 hours of forming. So you have a lot less time to get ready for this storm. That's my key message. If you have any questions or comments, you can follow me on Twitter. I'm at Accurano or what's called X. I'm at Accurano and we'll uh, keep an eye on this throughout the weekend.